Hi. I swear. You, you caught me just before. What? what? I know. I'm a. I'm a. You're a bike nerd too. I swear I didn't mm-hmm. make Wednesday outdoor bike day just because of you, but it just. It's kind of a perfect. Yeah, yeah, I'm going myself. I'm, I'm not wearing my special shirt, but I'm going to be bike riding later today. Absolutely. I'll be thinking so of I'm you. I'm in and, solidarity. Yes, I'm be thinking of you and listening. Bump. Yes, yeah. I'll be listening to the Bob Seska <laughs> show, as I always do, on my bike. Um, so mm. I are you as, I can tell on Twitter and, and your show, you're as annoyed as I am with this mm-hmm. coverage. Right? I was oh, saying yeah. yesterday, Chuck Fr- Todd framed every question like there wasn't even a way to answer other than framing it as what was Biden's mistake here. Yeah, right. Exactly. What's which yeah, mistake yeah. was this? Do you think this was the mistake? Do you think it's rude to negotiate with the Taliban? I'm like, I. Oh, how God. is there no context as to how mm-hmm. we got into this? Right. I yeah. mean, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, that's it's it, a big chunk of the reason why we ended up in Afghanistan for so long was because of yes certain factions of the press, specifically cable news, has been cheering this along and or conversely ignoring it for many many years not covering it at all right. until there's something something goes haywire and then oh my oh my god it makes for great television doesn't it oh ratings bonanza but the other thing yeah. is that i've been noticing is uh, and it's not i'm not breaking any news with this observation but for so many years the tv news media has been overreacting to the fallacy of the liberal media bias yeah right we've been talking about this forever now that there's this horrendous and ridiculous and fallacious notion that the, the the press has a liberal bias. Well, the truth has a very well-known liberal bias, as Stephen Colbert once taught us. Mm-hmm. And uh, with these guys, when they see an opportunity to to show their cred as being unbiased, they're going to yeah. leap all over it. They're going to jump all over it. And and this is what we're seeing now. They yeah. had a little bit of an opportunity, 36 hours, a little bit of chaos. And then we're going to go bananas because we need to prove to our audiences that we have no liberal media bias. But it's an overreaction. It's a ridiculous overreaction. Are we old at this point, Bob? (laughs) I remember when Americans were for America. (laughs) Period. I remember George W. Bush. Oh, boy. I remember talking Uh. about George W. Bush and (laughs) Rummy and, yeah. No, but I mean, I just, I, I, I mean, just, are they always on the side of gotcha? Right. I mean, so yeah. Biden now is saying we're going to abide by the, you know, the August 31st deadline. That was, you mm-hmm. know, part of the deal. But, you know, he's, of course, talking about he will continue to get assessments. And uh, uh, he made a lot of great yeah. points about why it would be best, you know, threat of terror, all that stuff for us to. And look at the amazing job he's already done in evacuation. But, you know, they're going to mm-hmm. jump on him if he'd go. Oh, see. Oh, now he's changing. It's like. What happened to being on the side of whatever's best for America in this instance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's ridiculous. They have no um, substance here to latch on to. Gotcha with an actual story is fine. I mean, we had quite a few gotchas throughout the Trump years. But when you're taking a nothing burger and turning it into, you know, a five Michelin star meal, I mean, it's just it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're taking this. uh, Again, they had a a little teeny tiny opening where they could say, oh, my God, what a mess. Yeah. But once the mess started to clear up, they should have changed their script. They should have turned the page. Oh, you mean mean, one of the most competent presidential administrations that we've seen in decades is actually doing an okay job. And now you're seeing all these calm pictures, thousands of people Mm order getting on planes, 80,000 over 80,000 people out. And right. And they still for days kept going back to the day one. Look at this. They're running on the tarmac. It's just okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have to tell you, I mean, my area of concentration in college in my political science degree was the presidency. And I did a lot of studying about the president. I've studied the presidency ever since college. You know, it's just been a passion of mine. And I I love that history. And I can tell you, objectively, this is one of the most competent presidential administrations that we have seen maybe in my lifetime. I mean, you have to go back a long way to find another presidential administration that is as no drama and is as competent as this administration. And that is, uh, you can check off the boxes. Yes. And you will find the, that that is objectively the, so. The press and is like the, an abused yeah. spouse. They're just like, I, mm-hmm. we want mean daddy that went off for cigarettes and then came home and hit us. We yeah. just, this is boring. Yeah. This daddy's right. boring. 
<laughs> and this is an incredibly complicated situation we're dealing with, right? This is a rear guard action after a 20 year war. Yeah. It's there are going to be some hiccups. But the fact that not a single yeah. uh, U.S. military personnel has been killed, there hasn't been uh, any of our civilians that we're trying to evacuate killed yet. I mean, that could always happen tomorrow. It could happen today. Yeah. But so far, what, 80,000 people they've evacuated so far. Yeah. Which is a massive effort. You know how many people they evacuated at, at, after Saigon fell? Zero. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. We're up to 80,000 yeah. now yeah. in Afghanistan. Well, and look at these That's two these twin stories. The House of Representatives voted uh, yesterday to forward a $3.5 trillion spending package, a win for Democratic leaders. Uh, it fell on long party lines after nine Democratic holdouts consented to the plan. All the coverage was about these nine Democrats and how blah, 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 mm-hmm. and Pelosi's lost control, and blah, 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 right? Dems in disarray. Uh, yeah. Pelosi uh, reportedly won the objectors by promising a vote on the uh, $550 billion, billion dollar infrastructure plan by September 27th. I love that they asked her, what kind of deal did you have to? And she said, they wanted a clarification on how we move <laughs> forward, and that's, yeah. what I, and that's what I gave them. Mm-hmm. She puts her sunglasses yeah. on, walks out. Okay. And, I and mean, then, uh, and then, talk about competency, yeah. But Nancy then the twin Pelosi. story, U.S. on pace to finish evacuations by uh, 8.13. You would think that would be a good story, uh, right? The mm-hmm. uh, 8.31, excuse me, the deadline. Um, but Jen Psaki said the president conveyed that our mission in Kabul will end based on the achievement of our objectives. He confirmed we're currently on pace to finish by August 31st. That that completion of the mission by August 31st depends on our continued cooperation with the Taliban, including continued access for evacuees to the airport. In addition, the president has asked the Pentagon and State Department for contingency plans to adjust the timeline should that become necessary. That's what yeah. a competent president does. That is yeah. leadership. And, you know, the press just can't figure out unless it's some disaster story, a you know, crisis for the Biden yeah. presidency. They can't figure out how to cover it. Right. We'll get 150,000 people out by August 31st or whatever the number happens whatever to be. Whatever it is, right. And CNN will find the one person who missed the boat. Right. And that'll be the big, gigantic, oh, my God, what a failure. And by the way, we've been telling Americans to get out for months. Right. What exactly mm-hmm. did you want Biden to do to force yeah. those Americans to leave when we told them been this deal for... was announced by Trump mm-hmm. and then by Biden, right? I mean, it's just, I, I mean, it's... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now, you go, said... Going back, to Nancy, going back to Nancy Pelosi real quick, I just wanted to add that... Oh, Holy crap. I mean, that is a huge success that she was able to pass a three point yes. five trillion dollar uh, uh, a package yeah. with moderate votes. I mean, they basically she got the moderates to vote for something like a Bernie Sanders kind of yeah. piece of legislation here. Yeah. And that is a, a huge success, I think, for her and another person who is always underestimated. And it's, if we just keep it together, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. <laughs> yeah. We are going to have a huge win in 2022 if we turn out in huge numbers and we pass yeah. these huge bills. Just, well, just turnout is the big word there. Like yeah, Joe Biden, absolutely. stay calm and carry on. Um, you said the, yep. like these poll numbers, like you could tell the press could not have been more excited that Joe Biden's poll numbers took a big hit. Well, what do you expect after a week mm-hmm. of relentless negative coverage? And you said temporary. Oh, yeah. As soon as the cable news stops leaning on the Afghanistan panic button, mem- mem- many are uh, overcompensating for the old liberal media bias allegation. Biden's number will rebound.